In this video, I'm going to go through the questions on the product rules for counting. A reminder that you can find the questions in the video's description. So for this first question, it's quite straightforward. We have five nominees for maths, four for English and two for science. So we just multiply those together. So five times four times two gives you 40. Part B of this question is a little bit more complicated though. We're told that one student is nominated for both maths and science, but importantly, the head teacher doesn't want any students to receive more than one award. So this student can't receive maths and science. The easiest way to approach this one is to write out each subject and label the students with letters. So for maths, we have five nominees, let's call them A, B, C, D, and E. For English, we have four nominees, I'll call them F, G, H, and I, and that's important because they are different students to the ones for maths. But science, we have to be careful. There are two nominees, but we know one of those students was also nominated for maths. So we'll call them J and also A. So you can see A is in both lists here. That's the student that's nominated for maths and science, and all of the rest of the students are only nominated for one award. Now to solve this question, I'd actually suggest working out the opposite. So rather than working out the number of ways where no student wins more than one award, let's work out the number of ways where students do win more than one award. Now there's only one student that could possibly win multiple awards, that's student A. So let's select them for maths, and let's select them for science. And then we just have four choices for English, it could be F, G, H, or I. So there's one way of selecting the winner for maths, four ways for English, and one way for science. And one times four times one just gives you four ways. And we can visualize those ways by writing out the letters. So we could have A, then F, then A, A, then G, then A, A, then H, then A, and A, then I, then A. They're the four ways where we do get repeats. Now in part A of this question, we worked out there were 40 possible ways of selecting the award winners. And there are four ways here with repeats. So if we want the ways without repeats, we just do 40 take away four, and we find out there are 36 ways. For the first part of this question, there are four memory sizes, two processor speeds, and 12 colors. So to get the configurations, we just times those together. So four times two times 12 gives you 96. For part B though, Jenny wants a particular type of phone. She's happy with three of the different memory sizes. So we'll do three. She wants the fastest processor possible. Now there can only be one of those, so times one. And then she wants it to be a color that she likes. Now we don't know how many colors she likes, so we'll just call that C. We're then told that she calculates this as 25% of the possible configurations. Now we found out in part A there were 96 configurations, so we just need to do 25% of this. So 0 0.25 times 96, which gives you 24. So we do 3 times 1 times C, which is 3C, and this equals 24, in which case C is 24 divided by 3, so C is 8. So there are 8 colours that Jenny likes. In this question, we have five contestants. We've got Isaac, Jamie, Kezia, Lucy, and Miriam. And crucially, a player can be selected for multiple different rounds. So if we wanted, Isaac could do all of the four rounds. So how many ways are there of selecting someone for the first round? Well, there's five. For the second round, it's also five. I could choose anybody. For the third round, it's five again. And the fourth round is five again. So we do five times five times five times five, which gives you six to five. Now for part B, it says each player can only play one round now. So once you've played a round, you can't play another one. So for selecting someone for the first round, there are five ways. But for the next round, there's only four because we've already selected somebody. So times four. And the next round, there's only three because we've selected someone else. And for the final round, there's only two available. So we do five times four times three times two, which gets you 120 ways. Sadly, one of the players doesn't seem to get to play a round. In this question, we're selecting three of these five birthdays to create a code. So to select the first number, there's five ways. Once we've selected that person, we can't choose them again. So there's now four ways. And to select the final person, there's three ways. So five times four times three gives you 60 possible ways. For this next part, we need the code to be a multiple of five. If it's a multiple of five, it must end in zero or five. So we need Reese's birthday, or possibly Joel's birthday. So if we forget the first two selections for a moment, call them question mark and question mark, there's two ways of selecting the final birthday. Now let's return to the first of those picks. There are five birthdays in total, but remember we've just used one of those for the final number. So there are actually four left to pick from. For example, if we put Joel at the end, because that will be a multiple of five, 
there would be Reese, Jamie, Jack and Luke left to pick from. So there are four ways of making this first selection, and then because we've picked one of those, there are now three ways of making the next one. So we need to do 4 times 3 times 2, which gets you 24. For this final part, we need to make sure that the code is greater than 150,000. Now if it's greater than 150,000, it must begin with Jamie or Jack's birthdays, or Joel's birthday, because if you select any digits after those, it will be greater than 150,000. So there are three ways of selecting the first person. Since we've now selected one person, there are four ways left, because there were five in total, so times four. And then there are three ways for the final selection, so times three. So three times four times three makes 36. For this question, we have six numbers to select from, and we're looking to make a six digit number. So there are six ways of selecting the first digit. Once we've picked that one, there are five for the next digit and then four for the next, three for the next, two for the next, and there's only one way of selecting the final digit. So if you times all of these, you'll get 720. For part B, we want five digit numbers now. So we'll start with the first digit. Again, I could choose any of them, so there are six ways. For the next one, there's only five ways. And then the next one, four ways, then three ways, then two ways, and that's the final digit. Remember there are five digits this time, and if you times this, it's also 720. For part C, we want four digit numbers this time, but they must also be a multiple of five. Multiples of five must end in five or zero. We don't have any zeros in this list, so the last number must be this five here. So when we come to select our first digit, there are only five numbers to choose from since I can't select a five because I need that for the end. So I'll start with five, then for the next one, there's one less, so four, then three, and remember it's a four digit number, so we're at the last one now, and it must be the five, so there's only one way to select the five. So five times four times three times one gives you 60. For this part, we need to find numbers that are between 40,000 and 500,000. To do this, we'll split it into two sections. We'll look at five digit numbers and six digit numbers. So let's do five digit numbers first. So if we're a five digit number and we're greater than 40,000, it must start with a four, five, six, or eight. So there's four ways of selecting the first digit. Once we've used up one of those digits, we could have any of the remaining ones. So there are five left, so times five, and then for the next digit times four, then times three, and for the final digit times two, which makes 480. Now we'll look at when we have six digit numbers. We'll need to be less than 500,000, so we could start with a one, two, or a four. So there's three ways for the first digit. And again, now we've already selected one digit, so there are five left. So times five, times four, times three, times two. And this makes 360. So we'll just add all of these together. 480 add 360 gives you 840. For this question, we need numbers that are between 40 and 90,000, and there's no repetition of any digit. So if we're between these numbers, we must start with a four, six, or an eight. So there are three ways of selecting the first digit. And once we've selected one of those, there are five numbers altogether, but one of them's gone. So there are four for the next digit, then three, then two, then one, remembering it must be a five digit number. If you do all of this, you'll get 72. For this question, we want an even integer that's greater than 500,000. Now if it's even, it must end in zero, two, four, six, or eight. The only one of those we have in the list is two, so it must end in two. If it's greater than 500,000, it's going to need to start with a five, seven, or nine. So there are three ways of selecting the first digit, that's the five, seven, or nine. There's one way of selecting the last digit, that's the two. So we've used two digits up, so there are four left. So it's times four, times three, times two, times one for the remaining digits. If you times all of this, you get 72. And for this question, we need four digit multiples of five where the first digit is greater than three. If the first digit is greater than three, it must be a five, seven, or a nine. However, our number must also be a multiple of five. And we need zeros or five at the end for that to be the case, but we don't have any zeros. So actually the five must go at the end. So we can remove that and it must start with a seven or a nine. So the first number is a seven or a nine. So there's two ways. The final digit is the five. So we'll put times one at the end. And for the remaining digits, well, we've just used two of the six, so there are four left, so it's times four times three. If you times this, you end up with 24. For this question, we want five digit even numbers. 
Even numbers need to end in 0, 2, 4, 6 or 8. And we've got two of those in this list. We've got 6 and we've got 8. So if we leave the first four digits for a second, the final digit, there's two A's, so we'll put times 2. Now we've already used one of those numbers for the final digit. So out of the five digits we have, there are four remaining. So for the first selection, there is 4 times 3, then times 2, and finally times 1. And if you times this, you'll end up with 48. For this question, we're after numbers that are greater than 60,000, but we're told we're allowed 5 or 6 of the cards. So let's look at when we use 5 of the cards first of all. If we use 5 of the cards and we're above 60,000, it must start with a 6, 7, or an 8. So there are three ways for the first digit. Once we've used one of those digits, there are five digits left to pick from, so it's times 5, times 4, times 3, and times 2, and this gives you 360. Now let's look at six-digit numbers. Well, all six-digit numbers we select must be above 60,000 because that's only got five digits. So we could select any number for the first one, so 6, and we could carry on for the next one again, any number, times 5, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1 for the final digit, and that gets you 720. If you add 360 and 720, you get 1080. For this question, we need the number to be greater than 3000, and also a multiple of 5. Looking at the numbers we have in our list, since we don't have a 0, the number must end in a 5. Now if the number's greater than 3000, it could be 4 digit, 5 digit, or 6 digit, since we've got 6 digits to choose from. So let's start with the 6 digit numbers. Now it needs to end in a 5, so there must be one way of picking the final digit. Now that 5's already been used, so there are 5 digits left, so there's 5 ways of selecting the first digit, and then 4, then 3, then 2, then 1. So there's our 6 digit numbers, you times those, you get 120. Now we'll look at 5 digit numbers. Again it needs to end in 5, so we'll put times 1 at the end. And we've used that number, so there's only 5 left to pick from. So at the front we've got 5, times 4, times 3, times 2. And again this gives 120. Now let's look at the four digit numbers. Now the four digit numbers are a little bit more complicated. They need to be greater than 3000. It must end in a five again, so we'll put times one for the final digit. But for the first digit, we need to be a three, four, five, or six. However, we can't be a five because we've already used that at the end of the number. So there are a three, four, or a six. This means there are three ways of selecting the first digit, so three, and now that we've used those two numbers, there's four for the next digit, so times four, times three, and if you do this, you end up with 36. So we need to add 120, 120, and 36, and this gets you 276. For this question, we need to be greater than 80,000 and also odd. If we're greater than 80,000, we've got two cases. It could be a five-digit number, or it could be a six-digit number. Let's look at six-digit numbers first. Now if the number is odd, it needs to end in an odd number, so from our list we've got 7 or 9. So when doing 6 digit numbers, we've got our first 5 digits, and then we've got two ways of selecting the last digit, because it's a 7 or 9. If we've used up one of the numbers for that final digit, there are 5 left to choose from, so we've got 5 for the first digit, then 4, then 3, then 2, then 1, and if you times this, you get 240 ways. Now we'll look at the 5 digit numbers. So if we're a five digit number, again, we need to end in a seven or nine. So we've got four digits and then two ways of selecting the last digit. But importantly, this number needs to be greater than 80,000. So if you're greater than 80,000, you must begin with an eight or a nine. So there are two ways of selecting the first digit. But this is where something very complicated comes into play. The first digit we've just said could be an eight or a nine. And the final digit could be a seven or a nine. But we can't have nine in both of those places because we're not allowed repetition. So we need to split this down again. The easiest way to look at five digit numbers is consider the case when nine's at the end and when seven's at the end. So let's look at seven at the end first. If seven's at the end, there's only one way of selecting the last digit. We've said it's going to be seven. Now, if we look at the first digit, we've used the seven. It could be an eight or a nine because we need to be above 80,000. So there are two ways for the first digit. Then we've got four numbers left to pick from and it could be any. So it's four times three times two and this gives you 48. Now we'll look at the case when nine's at the end. Again, there's only one way of selecting the last digit because that's going to be a nine, but now we return to the first digit. We can't have the nine because we've just placed it at the end. So the only way to be greater than 80,000 is to select the eight. So there's only one way of selecting the first digit. We've now used two of those digits. 
So there's four left to pick from and it could be any of them. So times four times three times two. And this gives you 24. So if we add up all of these, 240 plus 48 plus 24 gives you 312. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out what I think you should watch next and also subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.